A shredder may seem like a very simple mechanical device, but the intricacies of shredding something may humble you. When it comes to recycling plastics, one of the very first steps to reuse a material, other than sorting and cleaning it, would be to shred it down into smaller and more manageable pieces. So before I actually built this machine, I started off with this. I started out trying my luck with a paper shredder. I wanted to use the pre-built blade assembly and see how far I could push it. This was back in 2018 when I saw the precious plastic video on how they built their shredder. If you're like me and saw this thinking, well, I live in a city and don't really have scrapyards like that to find three-phase motors, or the next immediate thought after that is usually, wait, I don't have three-phase power to begin with then you're definitely not alone. Like any normal kid, instead of wanting an RGB computer or a new phone or a car, I actually desired a two to three kilowatt three phase induction motor driven worm drive gearbox coupled plastic eating monster people call a shredder. So putting aside the cost of the gearbox and motor, when I saw how much the shredder box alone cost, I immediately found inspiration and motivation to build my own. But a quick note about the website, if you're looking for a shredder assembly and want to save time and labor, I would recommend buying one here. You're going to be spending $200 and up on one of these anyway, and since most of these come assembled, you will save yourself a lot of hassle. I actually sent the files to a laser cutting company, but for the amount I paid to do that, you could buy an assembled shredder box here. Otherwise, if you are modifying the files for your application or want to change the shredder design, then it makes sense to get your custom files laser cut. All right, back to the backstory. Once the paper shredder finally let out the magic smoke, I decided to try to find a beefier motor to attach to it. Of course, a direct drive coupled washing machine motor was the next genius idea I had that of course didn't work. Hindsight is always 2020, and I know I needed a gearbox or worm drive, but wanted to see what I could get away with, and this definitely wasn't cutting it. I eventually bought a cheap worm drive motor and attached it to the shredder via the shaft coupler I made from old ratchet sockets. This shredder ran okay, and I put a bunch of plastic through it before I realized I was burning out the motor because it was running extremely hot. Well, the motor burned out, but the worm drive was still okay, so I just decided to find a bigger motor to attach to the worm drive and made this assembly. There's definitely an art to engineering something good enough that it works through trial and error. Or maybe that's just what I say to justify me being a lazy engineer. Anyway, a half horsepower motor seemed to have no trouble with the plastic I was putting through it until, of course, I tried thicker plastic bottles. Nope. Not a chance. I needed more torque to cut the thicker stuff, so the next idea was to cannibalize a bike frame to make a crude gearbox. Lining everything up was a little challenging, and stick welding it all together wasn't easy, and it's definitely not winning any beauty contests. But what matters the most is if it actually works. So after all that fooling around, I finally tested it. And you know what, with the 6 to 1 ratio from the bike, and the 30 to 1 ratio from the worm drive, I was getting plenty of torque from this half horsepower motor. In fact, doing some very rough torque calculations, I believe this setup had 260 foot-pounds, or 352 newton meters of torque. But as I quickly found out, that shredding thicker plastic was going to be problematic, even if I had more torque.
What happened was the metal shaft that was there to couple the shredder to the gearbox completely sheared in half. Well, I thought maybe I could try again and fix the coupler and got it running, but trying the same test again yielded just more problems. The worm drive couldn't handle the torque required to shred the thicker plastic and it finally gave up. I started realizing at this point that even if I had more torque, it doesn't necessarily get me anywhere if the frame and gearbox can't handle the stresses involved. The next step I had planned was to buy a gearbox that could handle the torque and step down the speed to somewhere around 10 to 30 RPM. I found this torque multiplier tool that is specifically used to loosen rusted truck lug nuts. It has a ratio of 58 to 1 and was designed to handle an astonishing 4800 newton meters of torque. To give you some perspective, the very first shredder I showed you in the beginning of the video only has about 500 newton meters of torque at the output shaft. However, mounting this gearbox and finding a way to couple it in a reasonably strong way to the shredder and motor was going to be challenging. On top of that, this was designed as a hand tool, not a powered tool, and it may not withstand the abuse of constant shredding forces. So after that, this project sat for a while until I did some research on gearboxes. I didn't want to spend an enormous amount of money on a single gearbox, but I found some pretty interesting ones on eBay. I made a lot of mistakes buying the wrong things at first because there is so much variety when it comes to these worm drive reducers. So let me first introduce a few brands and then what I recommend looking out for. There's Boston Gear Worm Drives, Dodge Tie Gear, SEW Euro Drive, and Falk Omnibox Worm Reducers. That's just a few of the gearboxes I've looked at based on resale prices. And speaking on that, Boston Gear seems to have some great resale prices considering there's a lot of them online that people are selling used. In the end, I bought a Boston Gear Worm Drive with the following specs. 1.2 input horsepower, 1900 inch pounds of output torque, and a 60 to 1 ratio. I don't think you need this exact gearbox, but I wouldn't change the gear ratio, assuming the motor will run at between 1700 to 1800 RPM, and wouldn't go lower than three quarters of a horsepower for the input shaft. If the output torque for the worm drive is anywhere between 1000 to 2000 inch pounds of torque, which is approximately 110 to 225 newton meters, I don't think you'll have a lot of problems shredding plastic for small-scale hobbyist uses. Anyway, once I had the proper gearbox, it was time to assemble a shredder. This shredder is from one of the earliest precious plastic shredder designs. The new designs have a better blade design in my opinion, but it's not a big deal either way because the blades can always be switched out. I sent my files to a laser cutting company, and for anyone wondering how much it costs to cut out this much stainless, there you go. I thought a lot about changing the material to some cold ruled mild steel for the cost to be cheaper. I'm sure it would work fine, but I knew if any rust started forming on the inside of the shredder it would ruin everything. So stainless is the safest option. I made some printouts of the shredder to help me in the assembly, and I started with the four walls, and I mocked up the bearing blocks too just to see how that was going to fit. I couldn't do anything past this point until I had the shredder shaft machined. Say that three times fast. This, <laughs> this was a one inch wide mild steel hexagon shaft about 12 inches long. I had to machine the ends to fit inside the bearing blocks and this took some time as the carbide tooling doesn't like interrupted cuts, but I got that done. I also had to machine these oil light bushings, but these are incredibly hard to machine. I ended up just using a grinder to cut them down to make them fit. They sit on the bearing block and are supposed to stick out just a hair so the outer shredder blades don't make direct contact with the inside shredder walls. I started stacking the blades and spacers. This is where you can decide how the blades are orientated. And this is a more complex subject that, than I initially thought because the orientation of these blades determines how much stress the shredder will experience while cutting. 
Of course, the blade design is a factor in that as well, but in short, if you orientate more blades to cut simultaneously, you will obviously need more torque to complete that cut. I started to tighten everything together and made sure the shaft rotated smoothly, and it was looking very nice. You will notice that I didn't assemble some parts of the frame because, well, they didn't fit. This was because, before I sent over my files to be laser cut, I modified some of the metric dimensions into imperial ones to work with the different thicknesses of materials that the laser company could cut for me. Since they didn't offer the exact thicknesses of stainless plates that the original precious plastic shredder files required. So, I forgot to change the dimensions of some interlocking frame pieces. This wasn't a big deal in the end because I just welded some of the pieces on anyway. I had to make a coupling shaft between the gearbox and the shredder. So I took this one and a quarter diameter mild steel round bar I had and machined it down to fit inside the gearbox. Once everything fit okay, I then had to bore out one end of it so the shredder shaft would fit inside. I don't have a steady rest, so I took it slow since I was getting some chatter given how much stick out I had. It turned out okay in the end. This is a rigid coupling shaft, and so you have to make sure that there is almost no misalignment between shafts. For a more forgiving coupling method, there is other commercial options available, and I believe the most common one is the jaw-type coupler from Lovejoy. The next step was machining a key slot in the shaft, which I did on the Bridgeport mill. Next I spotted holes for the set screws, and then I drilled and tapped them for M5 threads. I punched some holes at the end of the shaft to deform the end of the key slot and keep the keys from falling out, and then slid the whole assembly into place. I also machined a flat spot on the shredder shaft, and I really should have done this before I assembled the shredder, but I got away with doing it this way. I finally connected the shredder shaft to the gearbox and started tightening down all the screws. The motor I bought is a Vivor 2 horsepower single phase induction motor. You can get stronger single phase motors, but most seem to operate at a much higher RPM, which is incompatible with the gearbox. You can wire this motor for 120 volts, but I'm using 240 volts in this case. And something to keep in mind is that the torque of this motor is 8.26 newton meters. To control the motor, I am repurposing this control box I found that seemed to originally control a vehicle gate. It has two contactors and toggle switches, and a resettable 10 amp fuse that will come in handy. What I like about this motor is that the rotating direction is reversible if you switch certain wires around, and that's really useful when you're operating a shredder. I made my own wiring diagram and I went to work cleaning everything up and connecting the wires to where they needed to go. After some time, I was able to control the motor with this setup and could even reverse the motor's direction. You can see here when I reverse the direction, a different contactor would engage to make the proper connections for forward and backwards rotation. I then connected the motor to the gearbox and did a test. I want to say doing a test like this is extremely dangerous, because if the shredder is operating and stalls on something, the gearbox and motor can be flung off the table and on the ground. Don't ask me how I know this. Just make sure to clamp down the shredder, motor, and gearbox securely before doing a test like this. Watching it shred an entire milk jug, though, gave me enough confidence to keep going with the build, and I started to assemble a proper frame for the shredder. I made a basic frame from some square tubing and basically got everything prepared so the entire assembly could sit on it and be bolted down without issues. I then set it down, and off camera I added some plywood to the bottom before trying to move the entire shredder on the frame. This thing is heavy. And you'll notice I'm wearing my steel toe vans in the workshop, so I'm definitely acting like I have affordable health insurance. I got the shredder into position successfully and started bolting it down. I also added more plywood to the top, and I welded on some feet for the shredder body. This will allow me to bolt it down to the frame. Stainless is the worst when it comes to warping, so I was careful not to put too much heat into it so I don't end up with a crooked shredder. 
I then started to lay out and cut out some sheet metal to form a funnel that will not only make the shredder safer, but help with shredding larger items. I'm just TIG welding the seams together, so I put tape over the pieces and let it hang off the table so I could tack it in place. The funnel doesn't need to be fully welded. Tacking every two inches or so is more than strong enough. I then drilled and tapped the shredder to accept the funnel and attached it in place. Underneath the shredder, I welded two more pieces of angle that the lip of a container can rest on, so it's easy to insert and remove. And the frame can also support larger containers if required. To prepare the plastic, I'm using this electric hot plate to heat up the labels on the bottles to soften up the glue, and they all peel off pretty easily. I'm also sorting everything I can by type of plastic and color where possible. There's not much left to do but to shred the plastic, so I started to feed some milk jugs in first. You can see as it's shredding, some of the plastic sticks to the underside of the shredder because of the static buildup. I have plastic feet on the shredder now, and I'm wondering if metal feet would solve this problem. I could also just run a wire directly to the shredder frame to ground it. The shredded plastic came out great. I think it needs to be a bit smaller or finer if I want to use it in any extruder, but I'm definitely getting there. I was also using this shredder without the strainer that would normally go on the very bottom to act as a filter. So I will have to do more shredding tests with that and see if I can get finer shredded pieces. After shredding quite a lot of plastic, I began to notice a very bad sound coming from the shredder. This noise means that the shredder is encountering a lot of friction or rubbing and continuing to run it in this state would likely stall it or break something, so I needed to take it apart again to see exactly what was going on. As soon as I opened it, you could clearly see that a lot of stainless parts had nasty marks on them. Both the blades and the fixed pieces of the shredder had some grooves in them from rubbing, and I noticed that the tips of the blades were actually deformed. I started to clean everything up I could with an angle grinder and removed all the sharp edges and burrs I could feel. I started to reassemble the shredder and decided I wanted to try a different blade layout, so I went with this. If you're stacking blades like this, I would recommend tacking or welding them together because if you don't, then you risk plastic forcing its way in between the blades and pushing them apart during shredding. During reassembly, I also had to use some shims in order to get everything properly spaced. Take your time when you do this. It pays off to be careful when assembling something like this. The shredder was looking much better, and this time I also added some lithium grease in some areas before connecting it back to the gearbox. Sometimes the plastic just wants to sit there and protest, and I'm wondering what I could do to make sure that it goes down smoothly into the shredder. Maybe I just need to switch back to the original blade layout. I also have problems with bottles jumping out of the hopper, so now I have to have a cover on the hopper when I operate the shredder.
I know some people looking to build a shredder may want a turnkey solution, and unfortunately it's just not that simple. Everything is based upon rough calculations on how exactly the shredder's tooth geometry interacts with the material. The way I see a lot of people calculating the required torque for a given blade or tooth is based upon the tensile strength of the plastic, but I believe this can be problematic because of multiple reasons. First, tensile strength is defined as how hard you can pull something apart before it breaks. Shear strength is defined as how hard you have to cut a material before it breaks. And we really are looking for the shear strength when we want to do torque calculations for the shredder. Of course, technically, these parameters are related, and generally speaking, you could assume the shear strength is 50 to 70% of the tensile strength. I believe this is what is considered acceptable when the shear strength is not given a, for a material. Anyway, my point is I had a lot of trouble finding the data regarding the shear strength of plastics, and I have heard that this is because plastics are not isotropic due to manufacturing methods, but I'm not sure how true that is. I guess you could always do your own shear strength testing in-house and determine what values you want to use in your torque calculations. Another reason I find the calculations problematic is that the force required to shred any material is dependent on the thickness of that material. And when you put a bottle in a shredder, you can clearly see that it doesn't shred it consistently or uniformly. It takes chaotic and sometimes enormous bites out of the material that could easily surpass the amount of force you expected or calculated. You could design the pinch point, teeth, blade orientation, and hopper geometry to help with this, but it can get complicated pretty fast. If anybody wants to look at the formulas, I will link to some papers I was reading. So unless you're looking for absolute perfection at any cost, I think a far more economical and practical approach is buying whatever gearbox and motor you can afford, based upon the torque or horsepower that you think you need. In this case, precious plastic recommends between 2 to 3 kilowatts. And then once you know the amount of torque you have, you can build a shredder box or design the shredder blades around that provided torque. It's easier to replace blades on a shredder than replacing a motor or gearbox. And being able to modify the blades on a shredder means you will be able to tune how much torque is actually required to shred something. Finally, here's the cost breakdown of my shredder. You can see that I paid more for the shredder alone than I did for the motor and gearbox combined, which is why I think it would have been cheaper to simply buy an assembled shredder box online rather than getting my files laser cut. But overall, I really can't complain with the performance I'm getting at this price. It makes me happy every time I use it. I fund most of my projects out of my own pocket. If you'd like to see more projects like this or talk with me about shredders and machines, you can become a Patreon member. Thank you to all my current Patreons. Your support means a lot to me. As always, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.